So I have a box of 1988 baseball cards. Um, I had a lot of baseball cards as a youngster. So 88, I would have been 17 years old. 16 going on 17. I was in the 11th grade and I was collecting cards back when I thought was really, really exciting to collect these baseball cards. And then as I got older, I actually ended up ruining a lot of my cards, most of my cards, um, by putting them, for some reason, I put them in a plastic container and threw a tarp over them and put them under my deck and thought that would protect them. And of course, I was completely wrong. They're all ruined. But I was able to get my hands on some cards recently. A friend of mine at work, he's a collector also. And he said, hey, I have some a lot of cards I can share with you. So he started giving me these boxes, like these boxes, this box, and the boxes of cards. So I said, I'm going to have some fun with these. I'm going to open these one by one. I guess they call it pulling cards. I'm, I'm going to pull some cards and see what I get. Now, I don't expect to get anything extremely valuable out of these cards. That's not why I do it. I love to, have to see the cards. I love to see the old players, players I used to cheer for or against. There's Matt Noakes right there. I remember him very well. Detroit Tigers. I thought it was a cool card right there. Glove in his hand, ball in his hand. Pretty cool. Got some Don Madley on the front. Got Don Madley on the front there. Pretty cool. Then on the side, up. Oh, there's Wade Boggs hitting machine back in the 80s. Hitting machine. You know about that. And on the back side, we have Joe Carter. So I'm a Baltimore Orioles fan. So Joe Carter played for the Orioles for a little bit. So did Eric Davis, late 90s. And then we have Howard Johnson, Hojo, and then Daryl Strawberry. So pretty cool cards there. So I'm an Orioles fan. I'm looking for Orioles cards. There's also one card I used to love when I was youngster, a Bobby Bonilla card. I don't know why I love the card so much. It was a 19, this, this year, 1988 Bobby Bonilla card. If I can find it here, I can show you a picture of it. Nothing extremely special about this card. I just kind of loved it. Um, I would always look at it. And so I'm hoping to get that card again so I can pull it up here. It's right there. So this card right here. It's the Bayou Bonilla card, 89, 88, excuse me. Pittsburgh Pirates, a young Bonilla. I guess I like it because it looks so innocent right there. He looks so young. So I thought it was a cool card. I was a Bonilla fan. You know, Bonilla and Bonds with the Pirates was pretty cool. So anyway, I'm going to start opening some of these packs here. See what I have. Um, anything interesting. You know, I didn't look up yet to see if there was any, like, cool rookie cards that year. Any valuable cards. But I figured I'd just open up this box here. Now, full disclosure, I actually already opened up one of the packs. That's why one pack is missing. And I'm not sure where I put that. I think it's in my room. But, so, we'll just open up these. These are all still, you can see, very well sealed. Spring Fever had a little, they had a little uh, contest there. No purchase necessary. Probably won't win that contest, obviously, at this point. Um, pack is sealed. Got the skew on it still. And it's got the bubble gum in it, obviously, too. So we don't want to eat that. This is a, ninth, this is a Tops, 1988. Their slogan back then was the real one, bubble gum cards. So these were 40 cents a pack. And they would basically pop them open in the stores. And I think they did it like this. Let me see if I can do it here. Yeah, I thought I'm gonna ruin it, but they would pop, they would somehow, there we go. Snap these apart, I'm already ripping it. But snap these off and they would do it away like this. Shut that in there, so you had it like that. And that was sort of the, the stand. If I can pull this back so we can probably see better. But I have it framed up right now. It's going to be hard to see that. But that's sort of the stand. You see it in the store. You buy your cards. So let's open up some packs of cards here. See what we have. I'll get through a few of these and post it on YouTube. And then I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll just do this. Maybe open about 10 or 15 packs of these. And then there's 36 packs in this box. There's, there are 15 cards in a box, in a pack. So I believe that's about 500 and some cards. 
Um, anyway, let's open up this first one right here. 15 Bumble cards. We got one stick of gum. It says win a trip to 1989. Spring training. So 88, before I open this pack, 88 was an interesting year too because I'm an Oro fan. And that was one of the worst years we ever had. It was start off the year 0 and 21. No wins for 21 games. End up, I think we ended up that season losing 107 games. The next year, 89, was what we were calling our why not year. And we actually led the American League East for most of the year, came down to the wire, came down to the final weekend series of the season against the Toronto Blue Jays in Toronto. At the time, it was called the Sky Dome. And I think we needed to win all three games to win the division. End up losing two of three. I think we needed to win two games. We end up losing two or three. And it was the season came to an end without a pennant. But it was still a, a fun season coming off of 0-21 and 107 losses. And all of a sudden, you're now in the pennant race until the last two games of the season. So let's go ahead and open these packs. Let's see what we get here. I don't want to tear it, but so. So this first pack here. You see the gum is still in it. I don't need the gum. Let's see what we have. So, okay, I'm looking for Orioles mainly. Oh, we got a manager there. Oh, I remember Casey Candell. Jack Clark was a stud back in the day. The Cardinals. Glenn Braggs, I remember him too. Gary Carter, Mets. Who didn't like the Mets back then? 86 Mets when they won the World Series against the, uh, hey, against the uh, Red Sox. But here's a cool one for me as an Oriole fan. This is a former Oriole, Sammy Stewart. So he played for the Orioles mainly, but then he... Ended his career playing with other teams. You can see right there in the back of his card. Most of the Orioles, then Red Sox, and then found the Indians. Pretty cool, pretty cool card right there. There's a Bob Gibson throwback. Turn back the clock. Ken Phelps, remember him? Ozzy Virgil. That's a cool card. Taking the mask off. Umpire in the back right there. That's a cool one. Vince Coleman, Record Breakers. These were cool Record Breaker cards. I remember these. I remember seeing, having a few Oriole Record Breaker cards. I think Eddie Murray was on one of them uh, when he hit uh, homers from both sides of the plate. So I'm hoping to get that one also. Nolan Ryan, another turn back the clock. So pretty cool. No Orioles in that one. Let's open up another pack. I try to open them, I don't know why, neatly, but I'm going to end up throwing the pack away. What I'll end up doing is I'll end up opening these and I will put the Oriole cards and sleeves in the binder and I'll figure out what to do with the other cards too. I'm keeping all, the, I'll keep all the cards obviously, but I want to make sure I keep the Oriole cards in a special way, in a special place. I remember he's got a good, good, good catcher here, Terry Steinbeck. That's when the uh, Athletics, I think they won the 89 World Series. Yeah, they did. Against the, uh, who they play that year? Was that the Dodgers? I can't remember who they played, but I think it, I, I believe it was the Dodgers and in, in, uh, Athletics. I'm not mistaken. The '89, but this, is the, but this is the '88 pack, so we'll keep on going with that. Jim Gott. More. Hey, that's a pretty cool one right there. You have Carlton Fisk and Harold Baines from from Maryland. He spent some time with the Orioles, also. I think two stints with the Orioles. I remember uh, Carlton Fisk, they used to always have a banner at uh, Old Comiskey Park, pitch to Fisk at your own risk. I remember saying that. Good catcher. Charlie Lee Brandt, he's one of them, uh, he was around for a long time. I, think, I remember him being like a junk ball type pitcher, very effective. Bobby Valentine, excellent manager. Ah, that's a pretty cool one. Dennis Oil Can Boyd, Red Sox, Oil Can. I used to enjoy watching him pitch, even though it's a team I didn't necessarily enjoy watching, but excellent pitcher right there. Oil Can Boyd. Mike Morgan. Mike Morgan pitched for the Orioles for a while. In fact, for a bit there, he was like one of my best pitchers on our pitching staff. We, you know, when we had those, uh, I think that those early, like uh, 90, well, actually, even before that. 
let me see, he's going back in the car. Yeah, he wasn't with them then. So I would say maybe 88, 89, Mike Morgan was, one of, was definitely one of our better pitchers for a while. And there's another Harold Baines card with the White Sox. And he's, uh, did he end up becoming a manager? Pretty sure he did. He's a player right here, but he was the manager. You see a little bit of the gum stain. Yeah, he's a catcher. See a little bit of the gum stain back there from the uh, stick of gum. Let's pop up another one. So no Orioles yet. No, no, no Orioles in these packs yet, but I'm sure that's going to change. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, this is the one I was talking about. Oh, yeah. I love this card. This is one of my favorite cards ever. Look at Eddie Murray right there. Both sides of the plate. Switch hitting home runs. That's a great card. And I had this card, and it was one of the ones I ruined, so I have it again. Look what it says. Eddie, it says a uh, long ball threat from both sides. Murray belt switch home runs in two straight games. So in Chicago, May 9th, 1987, uh, he, uh, he became the first player in history to slug homers from both sides, lefty and righty, in two consecutive games. He had the game-winning RBI in each contest, always defeated the White Sox, 7-6 and 15-6. That's a great card. That's what I'm talking about. I'll put this in a, in a plastic sleeve and put it in the binder. First of all, it's one of our great Orioles. And then this card itself, that slug two from, from each side of the plate. And I, if I recall, he didn't start switch hitting until like, either college or the majors. He didn't, he wasn't like a lifelong switch hitter. He just picked it up late and became great at it. So I'm going to put that card to the side right there. It's a great one right there. What do we have here? I'm not going to say all the names, of course. Rich Yet. I remember that, that picture too for the uh, Indians. Rich Yet. Hey, there's another good one. Billy Ripken. Gotta love the Ripken cards. This is not the the, the famous... Baseball bat handle obscene language card, but uh, that's a great card right there. Cal's brother, little brother right there. A little Billy Ripken action. Excellent. Bill Buckner. Got a bad rap for that 86 World Series. Pretty cool card right there. Sheridan. Oh, Greg Nettles. I remember him mostly from the, uh, I believe the Yankees, and maybe maybe some Dodgers too, but definitely Yankees. Yeah, Yankees for a while. Excellent third baseman, first base. Bruce Hurst, he was on that uh, '86 Red Sox team that lost the World Series to the Mets. Oh, that's a great one right there. It's one of our one of the, the, our rival pitchers back when I was. First watching baseball the or for the Orioles, you know, while I'm following the Orioles. Dave Steve, I remember him and uh and Clancy. It was always like their two better pitchers. I think it was uh Tom Clancy. No, that doesn't sound right. Maybe John Clancy. I can't remember his, his first name, but uh yeah, I should look that up. But Dave Steve, excellent right there. I actually do enjoy doing this too. It's kind of cool to sit here and open these cards and not open them for the monetary value of it, but just the reminiscing about these players. Again, this is my uh, teenage years right here. Oh, this one right here has the gum stuck on it. Well, it did have the gum stuck on it. This gum is from uh, 88. I'll put that to the side there. What do we have in this pack? I kind of turned the cards in the opposite way so the face won't get, so the front won't get stained with the gum. Who's the now? Hey, Candy Maldonado, the Candy Man. That's the Candy Man right there. It's a pretty cool card. Bruce Suter, another good one. Oh, Chili Davis. Excellent, excellent ball player. Oh, Lance Parrish. He, I remember him mostly for the uh, Detroit Tigers back when they were a powerhouse. Tom Brookins, remember him also. Keith Morgan, he played for the O's for a second too. We made one of these, I believe it was when we made one of the late season acquisitions to try to push for the pennant. Can't remember which year, but we picked him up. Keith Moreland. 
All right, so decent pack there. We'll open a few more of these. I don't know if I'm going to go through the whole box today. I like how also these cards, the packs, if you look at the pack, it says, be a superstar. Be a superstar. Say no to drugs. That was always that big campaign back then. Just say no. Nancy Reagan. But she actually came, I believe, to a high school. And, you know, she came to Baltimore. I remember us, like, gathering outside the high school. And we had a camera crew there. And we had to all, like, do the chant, just say no. I don't think she was actually there at the high school. But she was in town that day. Oh, Don Madley. Cool card. Look at his eyes. His eyes are all wide. He's watching some ball he's hitting to the gap. I'm sure from the left side. Hey, Dave Johnson. Now, he's an informal oral ball player, second baseman in the 60s, then became manager, most famous for the Mets, but he also managed the Orioles. And actually had one of our better seasons, uh, 97. Went wire to wire. First place from the first game of the season to the last game of the season. Lost in the playoffs to Heart a Heartbreaker, I believe, to the... Uh, Cleveland Indians, and then he got he was named manager of the year that season and was fired the same day by Peter Angelos. So Dave Johnson, excellent ball player, even a better manager. Jose Cruz, remember him also? He played for multiple teams also, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Astros cards. I feel like I remember him from other teams also, though. Hey, that's a good one. Dell Strawberry. Man, I used to love Dell Strawberry back in the day. Him and Doc Gooden with the Mets. Yeah, by then, so this is uh, his 87, this was 88 card, but so has his 87 season stats. So up until that point, he already had 147 home runs. He had 39 in, 80, in 87, 27 the year before that, 29, 26, 28. So he was slugging home runs. And this is before everybody was hitting 30 and 40 home runs. So you had this young guy hitting 30, you know, 20, you know, 30 home runs a year, for, close to 40. It was extra special. He drove, look at the runs he drove in, too. 104 runs, 93, 79. Excellent ball player. Oh, Lloyd McClendon. I remember him, too. Lloyd McClendon. Remember the name, mostly, then. Hey, there's one. Tom Needenfuhrer. What about bullpen guys? Again, this is back when we always were. Hey, there's the card I've been looking for. Said I wanted it, and there it is, Bobby Bonilla. So I'm going to put the need and feel right there. Now, look, decent pitcher, play, you know, play for my home team. Um, but this is the card I said when I first started opening the packs that I wanted to see. And here it is. And, again, I don't know what about – and it, it, this is not a rare card. But none of these cards are rare cards because apparently they printed tons of cards, Tops did in the 80s. So it's hard to find a rare card. But this is pretty cool just to see this. This is him at the batting cage, young guy. So he was with the Pirates in 87. Um, he had 141 games then, so he was a starter. In 86, he had about 60 games. So he was a young player then. He wasn't he hadn't exploded yet like he, like he would eventually. He had 15 homers that 87 season. So Benny actually played for the Orioles too for a while. He played in, uh, I believe, 96 we picked him up. And um, that was actually one of our key acquisitions. And actually ended the season pretty strong, made the playoffs, Upset the Indians in the first round, and then we end up losing to, I believe, the Yankees. Yeah, well, the Yankees. That was the famous Tony Tarasco, Jeffrey Mayer play off the bat of Derek Jeter, of all people, a young Derek Jeter. And Tarasco was camping with the ball to catch it. And Jeffrey Mayer, fan, little kid fan in the outfield, stuck his glove, glove over, interfered with the ball. Umps never called it. Went off as a home run. That was game one. We lost game one, won game two, and ended up losing the series. But I, I believe if we would have won that game, we'd have gone to Baltimore up 2 nothing, And I, I liked our chances. So, yeah, Bayou Bonilla, excellent card. I like that card, too. I won't put it to the side because it's not an Oriole, but I do like that card. I love that card. You know what? Actually, I will put it to the side because I do love that card. All right, we got some uh, Nolan Ryan here, one of the record breakers. All right. And, hey, Roger Clemens. One of the best pitchers of all time. Strikeout guy. Excellent card. All 
All right, who do we have here? Carney Lanchford. Remember his name? I remember his also. His name also. All right. And forgive me if I'm speaking uh, not clear sometimes. I work overnight, so I haven't even been to sleep yet. It's Friday morning, I worked all night, and now I'm here pulling cards. Look at that. Jeff Ballard. So Jeff Ballard, one of our pitchers, him, I remember him, Bob Malachi, young pitcher for the Orioles in 88, 89. But 89 was his breakout season. He won, if I believe it, if I'll even be flipping the card overall, it wouldn't be in this card. But 89, I believe he went nine, he went 18. It was either 18 and 8 or 18 and 9. He's our best pitcher that season. Starter, lefty, not an overpowering pitcher, but he knew how to pitch. And he was he was our he was our best guy. When we needed to win, he would just pull it out every time. And I thought he would be he would be more than that, but um he never really that was his peak at 18 and I think 18 and 8 that season for the Orioles. Um and that was a special year, 89. But yeah, Jeff Ballard, excellent pitcher for at least a year for the Orioles. So we'll put that over here too. You really can't see all of them, so let me just kind of tighten them up a bit there. I want to cover up the faces, though. You know, we're going to put we're going to put Jeff Ballard right there. Sorry, Tom Eaton, fear you had to go back there. All right, um, Mel Hall, another good player That's for the uh, Indians. Remember that name definitely, Tommy John. So, Tommy John. So you hear about the words? We hear the term. Tommy John surgery. This is Tommy John. The surgery was named after him. He was the first person to have that type of surgery. It obviously wasn't called Tommy John then. But now everybody gets Tommy John surgery. You have high schoolers getting it. It's not rare at all. At the time when he got Tommy John, when he got the surgery, it was a very rare surgery, very risky. It wasn't a guarantee. Um, but he got it. It was successful. And now just about every pitcher at some point has Tommy John surgery. It's almost like it's just a given. It's just a matter of time before they'll have Tommy John surgery. Um, so, you know happens hope I'm not moving too slow also on these cards but I'm just reminiscing while I'm opening these we got here Calvin Sheraldi I always remember his name just being kind of funny because first one you know that's my first name is Calvin but Calvin Sheraldi remember him definitely hey Jose Lean I remember this card because I always remember wondering why was he wearing the yellow pirate hat. Like, but I guess this may be a minor league hat. It's a Future Stars card. Um, but at the time, the Pirates weren't wearing a yellow helmet. So I was wondering, why is he wearing why is he have the yellow helmet? But he's obviously a minor leaguer right there. Um, or at least it's a major league camp, maybe, but in the minor leagues. Pretty cool, though. Chris Bando. Remember him, too? If I'm not mistaken... He might have played for the Orioles for a second, too. Maybe not. Chris Banner. Remember that name? Hey, it's Goose Gossage. Now, we know Goose Gossage mostly as the Yankee, but there he is as the Padre. Rich Gossage. Rich Goose Gossage. We're going to go probably another... Let's see. Let's go five more packs. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go five more packs. And then we'll open the rest another time. But so far, I, I pulled one, two, three, four Oreo cards out of the out of the ones I opened so far. Hopefully, I'll pull a few more out of these last five packs before I call it a day. And if you like the cards that I'm pulling, or if you have some memories yourself, or any comments about how I'm doing this, I will please urge you to leave a comment below. And then uh, also... Subscribe to the channel, like it, you can thumbs down, thumbs up, I don't care either way. Hey, it's pretty cool. Cecil Cooper. So I remember him, the uh, Harvey's Wall Bangers Brewers back in the day. So one of my first years watching, so really I've been watching the O's since 79, but I, the one season I really remember the most though early on is that 82 season when it came down to the literally the final game of the season. O's needed to sweep the four game series in order to win the pennant in the American League East. At the time, the Brewers were in the American League East, and we won the first game. I believe it was a Friday night. Actually, it was a doubleheader. So I believe it was a Friday night. We won the first two games, and then we won Saturday uh, afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. So then it came all down to the final game of the season. It was a Sunday. It was Don Sutton versus Jim Palmer, and Jim Palmer didn't have his best stuff that day. He, was, he wasn't in his peak anymore. Um, still a good pitcher, but this wasn't 
Hall of Fame level pitcher it would be. Um, and the Brewers got the best of us that day and beat us and went on to win the pennant, go to the World Series, and I believe lose to the St. Louis Cardinals. But C Cecil Cooper, if I'm not mistaken, had a good game that day also. One of the big sluggers. But yeah, it's a pretty cool card. Broke my heart back then, but I can appreciate it now because it, it was good baseball. 82 Brew Crew, 82 Orioles. I remember that card too. So scanner. Hey, little Floyd Rayford. There we go. Catcher for the Orioles. He's one of those guys you can do a little of everything. He played catcher. I know he played third base. He wasn't the greatest player in the world, but he, he stuck around. He kept himself in the lineup. He hit just enough. And again, because he was versatile, he, he got a lot of starts. Floyd Rayford. Um, they used to call him, uh, I forgot what they used to call him, something, the Honey Bear or Teddy Bear or something. Um, but yeah, pretty cool car, right? Pretty cool guy right there because he just, he was versatile. And it kind of reminds me, he's just, he's almost like the symbol of that team, those, I hate to say it, but those old, those bad old teams. Not because he was bad, it's because he was actually, because he was actually good. He's like one of the rare good players we had. As we piece it together. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I should put that aside. Floyd Rayford right there. Danny Jackson. Remember them? Jay Reynolds. Hey, Dennis Martinez. Now, the former Oriole. On that great pitching staff we had in the early 80s. Went on to pitch a perfect game for the, uh, for the Expos, who are now the Washington Nationals. There's a little checklist. All right, Jack Howe. All right, and who we have here? All right, let's open up four more. Let's put these to the side. I should actually keep my stack over here so you can kind of see what I've opened so far. There you go. Well, you can't really see it that close, but it's close enough. All right. These cards are easy to open, too. You don't have to worry about like ripping them or having to cut the tops off. I like the way you pack them. All right. I hope I didn't say anything wrong either about these facts and things I'm remembering. I'm just really remembering them remembering off the top of my head. Wally Joyner, excellent slugger for the Angels back when they were the uh, California Angels. If I'm not mistaken, they were still California Angels back then. They've been the California Angels, the Anaheim Angels, the Los Angeles Angels, the Los Angeles Angels of, of Anaheim. But I always was thinking about it as, the, as the California Angels. That's, I came up with the California Angels, so I still call them the California Angels. I like the uniforms too. But Wally Joyner was a, one of them good sluggers. Brian Sandberg. He was the first guy. It was a big deal. He had broke the bank. And I think he was like he was like uh, tw seven years, maybe 28 million or something like that. Four years, 28 million. It was some crazy number. And I remember SI making a big deal about it. You now some of these players are making 28 million a season. Tom Tuffle, Tim Tuffle. Remember him? Jamie Quirk. Jamie Quirk played for the Orioles also. In fact, he had a key play in one of those playoff games. Uh, no, not the playoff game. If I'm not mistaken, it was the uh, was it against the Blue Jays? One key play in the, either the playoffs or trying to make the playoffs. I remember him having a pass ball. It was a big deal, but that was um, with the Orioles. Wild pitch or pass ball. I'm not sure when it was officially. John Tudor. Remember him also. John Tudor. Good pitcher. Wally Backman. Joe Price. Chris Brown. Dave Stewart. He was an excellent pitcher. Kind of intimidating on the mound there. I remember him being a starter, but at some point also going to the bullpen, if I'm not mistaken, with the Angels, I mean, with the uh, Athletics, when they were going through their dominant period with Dennis Eckersley. Got the gum is stuck to the back of this one. There they come. Yeah, it does leave a stain on the back. Um, but again, they're actually in, obviously in great shape, never been opened before. There's another great card I used to love, the uh, Matt Noakes card. I don't know why I like that card so much. First of all, I like his name, Matt Noakes. That just sounded like a baseball player. It just sounded like a guy who was going to be good at some sport, Matt Noakes. Yeah, it's a cool card there. I wasn't a Detroit Tiger fan, but I do like that card. I liked him. And it's Kent Herbeck. And I want to say, 
Uh, not is that Paul Molitor? I can't remember who that is. Let me look at the back. Uh, Kit Herbeck, who would that be? Is not Molitor. I wish I knew who that was on the front. I should know. I'm embarrassed that I don't know. I don't think it was Greg Gagne. It certainly wasn't obviously wasn't Curry Puckett. I'm not sure what that was. Let me look real close again. I'm not sure. So if anybody remembers who that player is, I'm sorry I don't remember his, him. Obviously, Ken Herbeck, first baseman slugger. Who's that? Is that? It's not Gary Guy Eddy. Maybe it is. Maybe it's Gary Guy Eddy. Yeah, so definitely not Greg Gagne. Obviously not Kirby Puckett. Not Dan Gladden. It's Gary Guy Eddy. That's Gary Guy Eddy. I should know that, by the way. And actually, that might be Memorial Stadium back there. So that scoreboard looks like the top of the Memorial Stadium scoreboard. Either there or Cleveland's old stadium. But I think that's old Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, the Orioles, that scoreboard right there, if you can kind of see the top of that. All right. Kevin Bass, good player too. Hey, Tony Gwynn, the late, great Tony Gwynn. All-star, hitting machine. Eddie Murray, Eddie, Eddie. People in Baltimore love Eddie. Eddie Murray, big slugger. So now I have the Eddie Murray record breaker and I have the Eddie Murray actual card from that season. Too bad he got run out of town. But he also came back later in uh, two more different stints with the Orioles. So. And they have a good relationship now with the, with the team and also with the fans, so that's good. Scott Bales, another good one. That's Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire before, before the homers, well, during the beginning of the homers, but before. Okay, sorry about that. My phone died. Should have charged it better before I started. So let's rip, rip through the rest of these. Open about four more packs. So again, this is the Mark McGuire 87 record breakers. Of course, he would go on to be... Uh, Home run, almost king, but not really because Bonds broke it. But he also is shrouded in controversy because a lot of those home runs may have been aided by performance-enhancing drugs. But anyway, it's a great card right there either way. Brian Downing. Remember, he's always like like Superman. He was always looked like he was built. You see his arms. I just always thought Superman when I saw him. In fact, I think some people did call him Superman. Luis Polonia, another good guy. He played for the Yankees, too. Some other teams, I believe, but definitely Yankees. Don Ossie, one of our closers. The Orioles, we'll put him right there in Oriole Row. Sorry, Floyd Rafer, he goes in front of you. Bob Melvin, another former Oriole catcher and then became manager. Not of the Orioles, of uh, I think Arizona Diamondbacks. All right, let's open two more packs. I want to open more, actually. I'm saying two more, but I really want to open more. I already see one I'm going to like right there. I see Sam Horn. But let's just start from the beginning. Let's throw that wrapper to the side. Dennis Rasmussen. Ras I knew how to say his name. Rasmussen. Remember his name, definitely. Uh, I had like this card, like about a thousand. I had like a thousand of these cards. I remember when I was younger and I was collecting these cards in 88. I couldn't like, I couldn't like avoid this card. I would get like so many of them. Every time I got a pack, it would be in it. Same with him, Fred Tolliver. Scott Fletcher, Sam Horn. Ah, this is a Sam Horn Red Sox card. He's actually, to me, an Oriole. He came to the Orioles a little later, but that's pretty cool. To Don Manley, All Star. Got like that. Jay Howe, Hubie Brooks. Expos had some good players back in the day. They really did. They, they were like a machine for, his, uh, I guess, drafting, signing players, but then couldn't keep them long-term. They had uh, Pedro Martinez. They had the big unit. They had a lot of good players. Andre Galarraga. They had a ton of talent. They were good teams, too. Uh, Denial of the Shields. I used to love Denial of the Shields. He's not up there with those other players I his name, but he's still a good player, though. Excellent player. His son plays now. Let's see what we got here. Again, if you'd like... The cards I'm pulling. If you have some memories, please go ahead and hit that like button, 
subscribe. I'm trying to build up my subscribers, each and every one. But I really want to do this, like, maybe weekly. Um, open a box a week. I really have some fun with this, because it's, it's kind of cool to go down memory lane. Manager. Willie McGee, good player. Very skinny. I remember looking always kind of skinny looking in the batter's box. Um, even right there, it's got that... You know what's funny? When I, I played high school baseball, it wasn't very good, but... I, I feel like some of my teammates would call me Willie McGee sometimes, and I don't think they were doing it as a compliment, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, skinny guy, looked kind of dorky in the batter's box. I think they were trying to tease me, but it's all good. I, I was thin back then. Weren't we all? Lou Whitaker, part of the double play combination with Alan Trammell. Excellent. Hope I'm centering these cards up good so you can see them. Kevin McReynolds, another good ball player. A lot of good players, man. Even the ones that weren't stars are just good players. Dave Winfield. Excellent. Let's go through a few more. I said I was going to stop there. But let's just go through a few more because why not? If this phone dies again, I'll just charge it more and keep going. Let me try to put, like I said, I'm trying to post. If I can post a video a week. It won't always be whole boxes like this, but if I can open up a pack or two a week like this and just kind of go through it, that'd be a lot of fun, I think. So, see if I can do that. Jesse Orozco, one of the better pitchers. Hey, uh, Mark McLemore, another former Oriole, second baseman. He, he stuck around for a while with different teams. Good ball player. Not a great ball player, but good enough to be keep, stay, keep himself in the major leagues for a while. Tom Leary, remember him? Pitcher, if I'm not mistaken. Dwight Gooden, Doc. There's a star right there. Doyle Alexander. Doyle Alexander played for the Orioles, too. Um, like, way back. He was an old pitcher back there. I, I want to say he may have played for the Orioles in the 60s. Let me see. Seven, okay, so, no, 71 Dodgers and the 72 Orioles. He was traded. I think the Orioles traded Frank Robinson to get Doyle Alexander. That's what it was. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, correct me on that. But I'm pretty sure the Orioles traded Frank Robertson and maybe someone else, and we got Doyle. We traded someone to get Doyle, and I'm pretty sure it was Frank. Yeah, he was around for a while. Roger McDowell, good ball, good pitcher. Jose Rio, didn't he? Uh, no, he played for the Reds for a minute, too. He was good for the Reds for a few years. He sure did. He's one of their better pitchers. I think something happened to him later in life, though. Dave Steve, another Dave Steve card. Hey, Mike Young. That's one of my favorite ball players back in the day with the Orioles. So I always had this running joke with a friend of mine. If you remember more, if you remember like old Memorial Stadium for the Orioles, dead center field, they had these auxiliary bleachers for the Baltimore Colts. So during the baseball season, they didn't use those bleachers. And so it's a long shot to those bleachers. I contend that Mike Young one year hit a ball beyond the auxiliary bleachers in the outfield at Memorial Stadium. A friend of mine says, no, it didn't happen, never happened. But I, I'm pretty sure I remember that happening. Maybe it was like left center or right center. But I remember him hitting a ball that landed beyond the auxiliary bleachers in the outfield at Memorial Stadium. If anybody else remembers that and can confirm that for me, leave a comment, let me know. Um, it will be a shot. I mean, you're talking dead center Memorial State was probably, what, 410, 415? And then you talk about those bleachers, probably another 50 feet or so. I mean, it was a shot, but I remember it happening. I remember being on the 11 o'clock news that night. I can't find any confirmation of that. I can't find any highlights of that. Um, but that would be cool. And actually, I met Mike Young, too, after a game once. Me and a friend of mine um, was able to run into Mike Young and talk to him. I actually, my friend's mom was actually talking to him. So it was kind of cool. Um, and I'm like, that's Mike Young, you know, we, and we, on the drive home, like, man, it was kind of cool. We like sitting there and talk to Mike Young for like 20 minutes or so, just talking like regular conversation. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he hit a ball and Mike Young, if you see this video, did you ever hit a ball beyond the auxiliary bleachers at Memorial stadium in the late, late, uh, late eighties? Yep. So I'm gonna put that right there. That's a pretty cool card. Glenn Davis. So another guy with oral connection, we traded, boatload of our prospects to get Glenn Davis. It didn't really pan out the way we thought it would. We traded Pete Harnish, um, um, Steve Finley, and and Kurt Schilling. Was it Kurt Schilling? 
I'm pretty sure it was Curtis Schilling. And for, you know, it was definitely, it was definitely Brady. I mean, not Brady, but definitely Finley, definitely Harnish. And I want to say Schilling to the Tex to the um, Houston Astros for the Glenn, Glenn Davis at the time. He was a stud power hitter, just a stud. So I didn't have a problem with the move at the time. It just didn't work out, though. He started off okay, but it never really, it never really panned out the way it should have with, with him, with the Orioles. And we end up giving up a lot of prize because Steve Finley was a stud, you know, outfielder, gift, very gifted with the glove, good with the bat. Um, Pete Harness was decent, but went on to the Mets, and we know what happened with uh, with um, with Kurt Schilling. He ended up being a superstar with the Red Sox, but that was that was not a great trade for the Orioles. But it was a good effort, though. I'll give him credit. Billy Bean. Is this the Billy Bean of Oakland A legend? Oh, it says, okay, yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it is. It's the same guy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's like the GM or, you know, runs runs the uh, front office for the Oakland A's. If, if that's the same guy, I'm pretty sure it is. That's Fred Lynn, most, mostly known as a, uh, a Red Sox, and I believe maybe an Angel. But he spent some time with the Orioles, too. One of our better players back then. All right. Oh, I see Brett Butler. We'll get to him. No, let's just flip this around. Shane Mack. Remember him also. It's like a football name. Shane Mack. Like Kevin Mack for the Cleveland Browns. Shane hey, Mack. Jim Traber. So, wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, he was supposed to be the heir apparent to Eddie Murray for the Orioles. First baseman. Slugger. Power hitter. Didn't quite work out that way. He had, a, you know, some decent years, but nothing amazing. Not certainly wasn't Eddie Murray's replacement. Um, but I remember in high school, there was a young lady in my class. Her last name was the same thing, Traber. It was Traber. It wasn't even the same last name. It sounded like it. I used to always call her, though, Jim Traber. You know, stupid high school stuff. But uh, I used to always call her Traber, even though it wasn't her name. It was close to it. I used to always say, hey, what's up, Jim Traber? That was stupid. Anyway. Jim Traper, remember that card and that player. I think he's still, I think he's still around in Baltimore too, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing something about him recently. I think he's still in the area or involved in sports in some way. Danny Heap, remember him? The way Mosby, another good name right there. If I'm not mistaken, he played for uh, Detroit too for a while. For, maybe not. Maybe. Let me see. Lloyd Mosby, I think he did. I remember it was him, Chet Lemon. But yeah, that's a great name from back in the day with the Blue Jays. They Blue Jays had some good teams back then too. Had some great teams. All right, so. Brett Butler. He's a uh, one of those uh choke and poke guys. Get on base. Uh you know, uh on base percentage guys. Hey, Mike Barker, this is the last guy, uh, 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 believe it or not, this this guy right here, Mike Barker for the Orioles, a few things about him. He's trivia, he's the last guy to win 20 games for the Orioles in a season. 1984, he won 20 games. Look on the back of the card, you'll probably see it too. Uh, where are we? Yep, 84. He went 20 and 11. He's the last guy to do it for the Orioles to win 20. We had some 18-game winners and 19-game winners with Mike Messina, but never have had 20 yet. The other thing about Mike Boddicker is we traded him to the Boston Red Sox, and in return, we got Brady Anderson and Kurt Schilling. What a great trade. Um, it could have been even better if we'd have kept Kurt Schilling because that, that's, that's great. You'd be able to trade a, a, a Mike Boddicker, a pitcher, and get future 50-home 50, 50 run season Brady Anderson – Excellent center fielder, excellent leadoff hitter for many years for the Orioles. And to get a Kurt Schilling in that same trade. And again, we end up spending, turning him around and trading him for something else. But uh, I think it was the Glenn Davis trade. But man, what a good trade that was. Um, but also, it's just weird that here we are in 2020, and he's the last 20 game winner we've had for the Orioles. I know that the wins aren't everything, and, you know, 20 games a year now is, you know, it's hard to get with bullpens and setup men and this and that. But 
Still, you would figure we would have had at least one or two other 20 game winners since 1984. He's the last guy. You're looking at the last guy to, for the Orioles to win 20 games in the season. And I don't see it happening anytime soon either. So we'll put him right there. Oral Hershiser, I remember him. Had, he had the uh, scoreless inning streak. That was pretty cool. That was in, I want to say it was in 89. And that's who the, yeah, the Dodgers played the, uh, yeah, the Dodgers won that World Series uh, against, I think, Oakland in 89. Buddy Herzog, excellent manager, legendary. Hey, that's John Habian, one of the uh, supposed, he was going to be one of our great, great arms um, for the Orioles back when we had, you know, Jeff Ballard, Bob Malacky. I want to say John Habian ended up, ended up going to the Yankees. Howard Johnson. Mets, excellent Met. So I'm just pulling Oriole cards here. That's the, that's my main thing. I mean, any card is interesting, but I just want to pull some Oriole cards. Any big names I remember from back in the day. So again, I would have been, when I was collecting these in 1988, I was a 16 slash 17 year old young man, young young teenager in high school, 11th grade, going to the store when I could to buy packs of cards like these individually. And trade it with my friends. And uh, here I am now, whole new boxes, unopened, and kind of going through those memories. Because those cards I had back then, I ruined. But I won't ruin these. Jim Clancy, that's the guy I was trying to remember. It wasn't Tom, I knew it wasn't Tom Clancy. Jim Clancy. So you had Jim Clancy and Dave Steve for the uh, Blue Jays. Uh, good pitches. Philip Bradley. He ended up playing for the Orioles also. I used to like Phil Bradley. Excellent ball player, good professional ball player. I want to say he was the, uh, I think I think he played left field for us. Good bat, actually he had a decent glove too. Yeah, Philip Bradley. I don't know if say Philip. Another former. This is like Oriole Day. Here's another former Oriole, Mickey Tattleton. He's more well known for his choice of cereal, Fruit Loops. But he was a um, that '89 season for him was so special because out of nowhere this guy's hitting home runs for us. Like, oh, who's this guy? Catcher, and he came on the scene. And he's one of the, the town favorites that 89 season, especially early on. He's hitting this club and homers, club and homers. Mickey Tellerton, everybody liked him. He got, he, he got really strong. And I remember him just being like a bodybuilder type look. But the whole thing was, he, 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 I think his favorite cereal was Fruit Loops. He ate Fruit Loops all the time. And that became like the fans knew it and would bring like boxes of cereal to the games. And it was a cool time back then, 89. This is before he was an Oriole. Mickey Tellerton. Hey, Mickey, you're so fine. Yeah, anyway, that song. All right. Um, hey, Mike Greenwell, another good, excellent ball player for the Red Sox. That's uh, Andre Dawson, excellent player. Jody Reed. Stan Jefferson, he played for the Orioles, too. We picked him up um, in 89. Did we get everybody in 89? We picked him up in 89 also, down the stretch to try to help win the pennant. He played a little bit of left and right field for us. Not a superstar, but I remember his name, Jeff, Stanley Jefferson. They never called him Stan. It was Stanley Jefferson. All right. I, was, I know I'm, my phone is going to die any minute now, too. Um, let me see what we have here. Hey, Tim Raines, Rock Raines. Hey, Ken Dixon, man, Ken Dixon. And look, he made the major league, so no disrespect to him at all. I mean, you know, he did what most people can't do. He made the major leagues. But, man, he gave up some of the longest home runs I'd ever seen. You just knew when Ken Dixon came in, if you were sitting in the outfield, you might get a game, you might get a ball that day. No disrespect. Again, I I can't pitch. But this guy, he had a good arm. Definitely had a good arm. Lively arm. But just, I don't know if it was the ball was just too straight or what, but he served up some home runs. But he, you know, again, he made the major league, so much love to him. I'm gonna put him right there. Ken Dixon. Phil Necro. Actually, oh, it's brother Joe and Phil. Pretty cool right there. Two pitchers, two knuckleballers. And they probably did more to the ball than this knuckleball, too. Um, that's a pretty cool card right there. Two brothers. Been around. For, went, they lasted for a long time in the major leagues. Just get rid of this. Yeah. Tom Herr. 
I remember him from those teams when they, uh, like I said, the uh, when they played the, uh, uh, who was it? When they played the Milwaukee Brewers. Pretty sure he was on that team back then. Yeah, he was. I remember watching the World Series and Tom Herr. Yeah. Pete Incavilla, another, he played for the Orioles also. I think everybody in the major leagues at one point played for the Orioles. And he's more well-known, obviously, as a Texas, Ra Texas Ranger. But he spent time with the Orioles also as a DH power hitter. That name, too, Incavilla. He, it was, I remember when he first came onto the scene, it was like a big deal. Like, man, who's this guy? Um, just could hit the ball a country mile. Charlie O'Brien. All right, I keep on saying I'm going to stop. Here's what it's going to do. I'm going to do this right here. I have two more packs. I got a box right here. I'm going to open these last two packs, and I'll save these for next week. I can't open them all right now. Plus, my battery's going to run out. But I do want to go through two more packs. Who will I get out of these packs? Let's find out. Oh, I see Felix Fermin. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Brett Saberhagen. Excellent pitcher. He pitched for the uh, Mets, too, but he's more, I know him as a Kansas City Royal. Pretty sure he pitched for the Mets also later in his career. Brett Saberhagen. I used to, man, we used to, Orioles used to face him. I used to, yeah, he's, I just feel like he's always used to pitch well against well, everybody. He was a good pitcher. Uh, Nipper. Oh, Bobby Meacham. Fernando Valenzuela also spent time with the Orioles. But he's obviously way more well-known as a Dodger. He came onto the scene big time. I think 78 maybe? No, 1980. He came on the scene in 1980. I remember him. Uh, but really, 81, he won. 81, he won. Uh, no, 82, he won 19 games. But yeah, he was a phenom when he came onto the scene. Fernando Valenzuela, he used to look up to the sky when he threw the ball. Like He didn't even like focus on the catcher. He, when he first got into his lineup and delivery... His eye will go toward the sky, but he was a great pitcher. Jimmy Key, he also was a Oriole. We had him for a while when we had like um, him and Scott Erickson. Excellent pitcher, Jimmy Key. And we have Daryl Boston, Ozzy Virgil, Dave Rigetti. Got like Dave Rigetti. Even if I'm not. Of course, I don't like the. I'm not a Yankee guy, but you, but they have some players you gotta like though. David Getty's one of them. Yvonne Calderon, excellent. Hey Jerry Harrison, so pretty cool right here. This is Jerry Harrison. His son Jerry Harrison Jr. played for the Orioles, second baseman. As a matter of fact, when we had Harrison Jr., it was a battle for second base between him and Brian Roberts, and they were both really good ball players. Um, we ended up keeping Brian Roberts. I think he had a little bit more speed and a little bit more uh, offensive ability. Um, but, yeah, his son, Jerry Harrison Jr., not a bad ball player himself. And like I say, we spent time with the Orioles, but we had to pick one or the other. Orioles ended up picking uh, Brian Roberts, which wasn't a bad choice. He ended up making the Orioles Hall of Fame. He's an excellent player. And Jerry Harrison Jr. went on to play for other teams also. But there's his dad right there. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I watched his dad play. When I was a teenager, and I watched his son play as a young man. Carney Lansford, another good ball player. Felix Fermin. I just remember that name, Felix Fermin. Yeah, pretty cool right there, Jerry Harrison Jr., Jerry Harrison Jr.'s dad. All right, last pack. Here we go. Let's see if we get a winner here. Let's see if we get maybe. You know what we don't, don't have yet? We, haven't, we don't have Cal yet. Maybe Cal's in this pack. Do I have Cal? Let's find out. And Cal is my favorite all-time Oriole. Um, Adam Jones is up there, too. Adam Jones, Cal, Eddie, Palmer. All right, who do we have here? Brian Fisher. Davey Lopes. He, be, uh, he was a manager for a while. Actually, he was an, he was an Orioles uh, managerial staff for a while. I remember being the first base coach. Excellent playing career. Tim Cruz. Danny Cox. It is uh, Jim Carter, I mean, excuse me, Joe Carter, and I forgot his name. Let me see. I'll note when, when, it, when, it, when it hits me. Uh, oh, yeah, Corey Snyder. That's Corey Snyder right there. Joe Carter and Corey Snyder, excellent uh, outfielders for the uh, for the uh, Indians back, in, back then. Andre Dawson, you know he's a star. Benito Santiago, he was cool because he used to uh, throw, he's a catcher for the Padres, 
And he used to throw runners out at second base from his knees. It's like the first person I saw really doing that. He didn't get it. He didn't, once the pitch was delivered, he didn't jump to his feet and throw. He throw right from his knees and gun you, gun you down. Excellent. I used to just love watching that. So, anyway, it's Alan Trammell, the other part of the double play combination in uh, Detroit with uh, Lou Whitaker. And we, oh, Robin Young. There's a, there's a star right there. Robin Young. He started, I remember him when I was younger as a shortstop for the Brewers, and then he ended up going to the outfield for a while. Hey, there's Jim Dwyer. Jim Dwyer, excellent pitch hitter for the Orioles. Um, so that's pretty cool. He was a professional type hitter. Wasn't a superstar, but he was he played his role very well for the Orioles. Excellent batter off the bench. We have oh Spike Owen. Remember him also. Oh, let's let me put the Jim Dwyer right there. Okay. Lance, Larry Parrish. I'm about to say Lance Parrish. Larry Parrish. Remember that name also. And last one, Steve Lyons. He was a good ball player. I think he played first base, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty good. Yeah, third base outfield. So I was wrong. Third base outfield. But anyway, so that's what I have. So out of the half of box I pulled so far, I pulled about half this box. I was looking for Oriole cards. Got a handful of them. Some pretty good ones. Didn't get Cal, though. So I got Jim Dwyer, Ken Dixon, John Habian, Mike Boddicker. I'm going to put him down because he's one of the better ones. Eddie Murray. Put him down also. Mike Young, one of my favorite players for the Orioles just because – this is a great power hitter. He was supposed to be Eddie Murray's replacement also at first base um, with the power. And he flashed some good power early on. Um, but then his batting average just kept going down. And before you know, he wasn't um, that great of a hitter. But man, when he did get a hold of one, he could drive it out of anybody's ballpark. So Eddie Murray, Mike Young, Don Ossie, big reliever. Floyd Rayford, catcher slash third baseman, utility type guy. But he actually started a lot too, though. Um, Tom Needenfuhrer, Neiden reliever. I love this card. This is the Eddie Murray Record Breakers card. Uh, we homered from both sides of the plate in back-to-back -back games. It's pretty cool. So you got him back-to-back -back right there. I love that card. It's one of my favorite cards. We got Jeff Ballard, 18-game winner in 1989. I want to say he was 18-8, and eight, if I'm not mistaken. And got Billy Ripken. So I didn't get Cal, but I got Billy Ripken. So that's what I have so far. So I'll open up another half of this pack next week and pull some more cards. Looking for Orioles and looking for some Cal. All right. And again, if you like the video, please like it. I got a point below like that. Pick, click that link below. Let me put somebody I like up front. I got a lot. Let me see. Where's, where's Eddie? There's Eddie. But let's put the Eddie. Let's go Mike Young. All right. So put that, hit that link below. And like it, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, give me some comments, things you like, things you didn't like, and I'll see you next week. Later.